The Boston bombing was a horrific tragedy, and whoever was behind this event deserves to be brought to justice. Unfortunately, there's a great deal of evidence that indicates that this isn't going to happen. The mainstream media and government authorities are hiding the real story. In this video, we are going to demonstrate that at the very minimum, the authorities had prior knowledge of the attack and allowed it to happen. Now, the first anomaly that surfaced immediately after the bombing was an eyewitness account indicating that there were government agents on the scene and on the roof right before the blast. This eyewitness account can be confirmed by looking at photographic evidence before and after the event. There are pictures clearly showing someone on the roof and several men wearing identical pants, boots, and shirts and listening to communications through devices in their ears. These men were positioned right next to the blast zone, then later moved across the street just before the bomb went off. These same men were then seen communicating with authorities after the explosion. One photo shows one of these men walking around on the scene with an unidentified device. Another shows someone crouching next to a backpack in a doorway. This photographic evidence opens up another can of worms because these uniforms match the dress code of a private security company called Kraft International. And in one of the photos, a logo can be seen on one of their hats that seems to match the Kraft International logo. Neither the mainstream media nor government officials have made any mention of the contractors. And when government officials were confronted, they refused to answer the question. Next question, please. Next question, please. Yes. So there's a lot yes. more evidence of a cover-up that we aren't even going to touch here because it would open up way too many tangents. If you do a little research on your own, you'll find plenty of information. Just what we showed here clearly indicates that the Sarnoff brothers weren't acting alone if they were indeed involved in the bombing. However, their parents have come forward stating that their sons had been in contact with the FBI for years and that they were framed by the U.S. government. There are also serious questions concerning the death of the older brother. The mainstream media released this footage of someone closely resembling him being placed under arrest, alive and well. Yet shortly after, it was reported that he was killed in a shootout. Just like in the Dorner case, it seems like someone didn't want these men to get the chance to stand trial. Of course, the authorities haven't commented on this at all. What really happened? Well, we won't know unless there's a real investigation, which at this point seems highly unlikely. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are, are you trying to say that the government was involved in a plot to kill and injure its own citizens? That's crazy talk. Really, you think so? Funny, Ted Gunderson, a former FBI chief, has a different point of view. Look at the terrorist acts that have occurred. The CIA behind most, if not all of them. We had the Marine Barracks. We had our embassy in Kenya. Uh, we had Pan Am 103. Uh, we had the USS Cole. Uh, we had Oklahoma City. We had the World Trade Center in 1993. So if this event was engineered by the government or intentionally allowed to happen, what's the motive? Well, let's look at how the government responded. Just two days after the attack, Senator Lautenberg announced he was going to reintroduce legislation requiring background checks for the sale of gunpowder. And as we warned in a previous video, while everyone was distracted by these events, they passed the CSPA internet bill in the House. Now it just has to go through the Senate. Also under this cover, the president signed a law called S-716, which basically gutted the Stock Act, which was intended to make it harder for the legislative and executive branches from engaging in insider trading. The media distraction conveniently kept the attention off of this. However, the most disturbing aspect of this situation is the way they used it to roll out martial law on the streets. Using the exact armored vehicles we had exposed in a previous video entitled, Government Preparing for a Collapse and Not in a Nice Way. We saw these militarized SWAT teams searching from house to house with no warrants. The streets looked like a war zone. This was a further extension of the abuses we saw in the Dorner case. What they are doing right now is conditioning the American people for police state justice, where suspects are hunted down by paramilitary forces which break down people's doors at will, and where suspects are mysteriously killed without getting a chance to stand trial. This is what the NDAA looks like, people. They didn't make these laws for nothing, and what we're seeing is just the beginning. Make no mistake, the people who are really behind this event aren't going to stop. There's more to come, and the violations of your rights are going to become more and more blatant. The powers that be are building up to something big. I don't pretend to know what that event is, and I don't pretend to know when it's going to happen. But I will say this, if we allow them to get away with this now, eventually these scenes that we saw in Watertown are going to be directed at political dissidents. All of the signs that your government is preparing for a full police state crackdown are right in front of your eyes. We've shown in previous videos how the government is buying up billions of rounds of hollow point ammunition, setting up plans and training employees for military detention camps for U.S. citizens, and buying up thousands of military-grade armored vehicles like we saw being deployed in Watertown. I understand that this is extreme, and that some of you may be hesitant to share this information with others. But if you see what's at stake here, then you have the responsibility to do everything in your power to wake people up. The embarrassment you may feel when someone calls you a conspiracy theorist or something along those lines is nothing compared to the consequences of allowing these criminals to proceed unhindered. 
please make a commitment to reach out to as many people as you can, especially the police, the military, and the DHS. There are good men and women in these organizations. We've got to get their attention. We've got to help them realize where this is going. If we fail in the not too distant future, you're going to wake up and realize that you're living in a full out military dictatorship. And when that day comes, it's going to be too late.